Paul writes this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so, kind of going off this, how easy is it for us, uh, in a second, for us to be peaceful one instant, and then in an instant it's gone? Uh, for me, it's really easy. I, I, I think for most of us, we would say that it's easy. Wars can take place in our, in our minds and in our hearts in just a matter of seconds. The, the, the smallest, the most insignificant thing can often set us off. Sometimes it's not even... Sometimes it could be something as small as a phrase or a word, or sometimes it's not even, yeah, like an eye roll. It doesn't even have to be a, a word. It can be a, a look that, that just sets us off uh, and, and shatters that peace that we had just seconds ago. And I think the reason why is because when we think of peace uh, in, in modern day America, 21st century, we think of peace as kind of the absence of conflict, mm -hmm. uh, the absence of war. You'll hear presidents say, uh, you'll hear people say a wartime president and a peacetime president uh, because we see that those are opposites. But what if I told you, and I think that, that Paul would, well actually, uh, Paul wouldn't agree with me, I would agree with Paul because this is the argument that Paul is making, is that peace isn't just the absence of conflict. Peace is so much more than that. For Paul, peace is something that surpasses all circumstances. It surpasses all conflicts, and he writes even that it surpasses all understanding, all common sense. It, 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 it's a peace when peace shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make sense to the world. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense that you should have peace, because peace is something that it goes beyond circumstances, all, beyond situations, beyond pandemics, beyond chaos. It's something that goes beyond all of those things. It's this calm sense of uh, rest, I would say, like a a restfulness, knowing, kind of what we talked about earlier, that the Lord is at hand, knowing um, that that the Lord is working in the middle of this, and so we don't need to uh, we don't need to have peace to experience peace. If that makes any sense, we we can have peace in the middle mm -hmm. of conflict. Uh, we can have peace in the worst of circumstances. And remember. Uh, it's really important that we remember what and when Paul is writing this from. Uh, Paul's writing this from a prison cell. This isn't Paul uh, in a mansion after he's retired saying we can have peace. This is Paul in the middle of the worst. Or actually, for this, this wasn't the worst. Paul Paul had tons of other worst things, but this is pretty bad. Uh, being in prison, he was beaten, shipwrecked, bitten by a snake, all these different things. Read, uh, there's a story in Acts 23. Uh, Paul has a group of people fast until he is dead. They fast from water and food until he dies. That's how much Paul is hated. So this isn't really anything to Paul, but this is something big for us, being in prison. Uh, Paul is writing that we can have peace even in the worst of circumstances, and he's living that out because he's in the worst of circumstances. And so this, pe this concept of peace, it surpasses all understanding because it surpasses all of our situations. And it's a rest knowing that the Lord is working in the middle of those things. Yeah, and this peace is available to you right now, okay. in this moment. Thank you for watching all the way through. This is the last thing we're going to say. This peace is not some uh, thing up in the air or just words in a, in a Bible. This peace is for all Christians, and it's for you. And so if you're uh, in this position of being at home and being on quarantine and feeling frustrated or feeling anxious, that is a natural response. I don't blame you for that. But what the scriptures say is that we get to have a supernatural response because as believers, we have uh, the ability to be joyful. We can rejoice. We have the ability to have reasonableness when reasonableness doesn't make sense. We have the opportunity to not be anxious, but to be prayerful. And those things guide us towards having a peace that God gives to us that doesn't make sense to the world. And that is for you too. And we just want to invite you towards that. Um, you know, we want you to have this settle into your hearts and your minds. It's, it's both a spiritual thing, a physical thing. Uh, this peace is beyond what we can even explain. Yeah. Uh, and so we just want to encourage you to, to dig into the study that we're going to offer to you. Uh, we want you guys to ask questions about it, engage about it. Um, but we, um, we're praying that for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. But why don't, why don't we pray? Yeah. Uh, let me pray for us. Um. Jesus, we are uh, eternally grateful um, that you not only offer us a future peace, um, a future rest uh, with you one day in heaven, but you offer us peace today, uh, even in the worst 
of circumstances. We ask that this passage would be our prayer for the week, that we would uh, dwell on this passage for, for not just a few minutes on a Sunday night, but that we would dwell on it for the weeks to come, and that uh, however long this, this social distancing or quarantine lasts, uh, we, we, can, we can dwell on this passage and know that we can have peace uh, from you, not from, not from anything else, but only from you. Yes, God. So help us to do that. We, we can't do that without you. Uh, if we tried without you, we'd fail. And so we ask that you would be with us and be the strength uh, that guides, guides our pursuit of your peace. Uh, we ask that you be with each of our students, be with each of us uh, as we uh, are going through this time uh, and that, that your will would still be done wherever and however you want it to be done. So, uh, we pray these things Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. See you next week, guys.